Hey guys, welcome back to No Catchy Name. It's me, Ella. Today is episode 135 or 6 or 7. <laughs> One of those it'll be in the title but yeah so i just got home my hair looks a little weird because i had a hat on i didn't bother to take my hair down to put the hat on so i got like a clippy thing in there because i'm from the 90s <laughs> and um yeah anyways jesse uh my mom came to pick up jesse and then she took me to the post office and then i wanted to record this real quick so i can get it up today today is february 1st can y'all believe that it's already february <laughs> i feel like the second half of last year and january just went whew, flew right by <laughs> uh i guess i'm kind of glad because um everything going on in the world but it also kind of sucks because you know I feel like our days are just flying by and you know all these times that we have to make these memories are just fly by and yeah but anyways hopefully February will find a steady medium I already have my Valentine's decor up <laughs> I always put uh, my holiday decorations up early but uh, yeah anyways I'm gonna get into the video I got one two three four five six finished objects to share with you guys and I don't have any active webs right now at all uh, I don't think I'm gonna look on my card. No, I don't. <laughs> I need to start my second square for my B movie. I'm gonna rewatch it. I might do that today. Just so I can figure out which um, scene I wanna take the clip from to make my square with and get that going. And yeah, I don't really have anything else. I wanna make Jesse a pair of mittens, but I don't know. I'll figure it out later today. I'll start something. But anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and hop into my finished objects. So all the links for these patterns that I talk about will be linked below because I didn't take notes this time. <laughs> Normally I like write out notes to uh, read while I'm filming, but I didn't do that this time because I'm kind of in a hurry to get this out today because <laughs> so I, I got other stuff to do. But uh, so if I don't remember the pattern names and stuff, it'll be in the description box below the video to uh, the pattern sources. I think they're all free patterns except one. But anyways, first I have two croissants <laughs> that I finished for last Saturday. It was National Croissant Day. So I finished this one. It's supposed to have a pop cleaner in it to make it stay bent, but I don't have any pop cleaners. But I whipped this one out and I wasn't super happy with it, so I went ahead and made another one. So this is a free pattern, but I just I didn't like it as much as I like the second one. So the second one is by uh, One Dog Wolf. I remember that. It's an amigurumi. This one's just like a triangular piece that you roll up. I didn't like that. I just don't like the, sh the shape of it. But then this is the second one. <laughs> so he's super cute. I didn't have the best brown color for a croissant. Um, I'm actually really low on browns, except like uh, chocolate brown. I have a lot of that. I need to remember that next time I go yarn shopping and get some just solid colors for my amigurumis. But this one is an amigurumi by One Dog Wolf and it's free also. And it's made in two pieces. This side and this side are two separate like cone shapes that you sew together in the middle. You stuff them and then you make a triangular piece to wrap around it. And I just used some safety eyes and some black yarn to stitch on a mouth. <laughs> But it's really cute. I think it turned out super cute. It's a cute little um, croissant. <laughs> That'll probably be in the Etsy shop soon. Uh, there's a few amigurumis on there right now. And I got another one right here. I'm going to show you in just a minute. That will be going on there too. The next shop update is going to be drawstring bags on February the 4th at 12 p.m. Central Standard Time. Um, that's in a few days. Because today's first. But uh, yeah. So that'll be. They might be in there then. I don't know. Whenever I get around taking pictures. So that's those two croissants. So my next finished object, this is a paid for pattern by Crystal at Chronically Crocheting, and I'll link it below. She has it on her Etsy, and it's called Mr. Purrs a lot. Last, last week, two weeks ago, I made a big purple one. She asked me to test it for her, and uh, so I made my purple one, <laughs> and it's already at a new home. It got sent off uh, after I showed it last week, I think, in uh, the No Catch Your Name episode, but I made this one. This one, I took a screenshot of the comment. I'll pop it up here. Uh, when I'm editing <laughs> someone, I can't remember who it was, but suggested to make a, um, to use the cream color that I bought for another cat, which is all of this yarn chunky. And the color is sand frost. It's like a creamy white color, um, uh, to make a Siamese cat. Cause I was going to make a cream and pink one. But, um, when they said that, I thought that was a cute idea. So I, I took that, um, uh, suggestion <laughs> and ran with it. So ta -da! <laughs> I made a Siamese cat. Mr. Purse a lot. So he has a chocolate brown um, tail, muzzle, ears, and the br the black around his eyes. I made it brown just because I had it laying beside me. And then the inner eyes, the iris, the nose, and the inner ears are I love this yarn, toasted almond, I believe. The bl the dark brown is I love or red heart chocolate, and then the body is uh, this I love this yarn chunky sand frost was that what it was yes so for the ears and the muzzle i held 
and the tail. I held two strands of the Red Heart chocolate together to make it like a bulky. And then this is already bulky. And then the brown, the light brown parts uh, didn't need to be bulky. It just worsted the weight. I made my own eyes. Her pattern calls for uh, 30 millimeter safety eyes, which I don't have. I have them in my Amazon cart. I need to order them because I want to make some Yodas and stuff. Other bigger amigurumi, so I need to just order them, get it over ready. <laughs> and um, so I just crocheted my own eyes. I started with the uh, iris color, and then I added a row of the chocolate color. And then this little part, <laughs> the pupil, I guess, is what it's supposed to be. And the little glint is just like embroidered on there. And the nose is embroidered on the muzzle. And then the uh, whiskers are the chocolate also. So he's cute. He's really fat. I think I overstuffed him a little bit. <laughs> but um, he's still adorable. But I'm going to put him in the Etsy shop if anyone wants to um, check him out. I will tell you, though, that he has to be shipped in a box, <laughs> a pretty big box. So his shipping will be higher than, like, my bags normally are because he has to be shipped in a priority box because of his size. He's not really heavy. I think the purple one that I sent off, it was, like, it was like one pound and six ounces. So it was, like, $10, I think, to ship it. But, uh, yeah, so he'll be in the Etsy shop as soon as I take pictures of him. If anyone's interested in this cute Siamese cat, <laughs> I think it's so cute. I got his ears on pretty even. I sold this one on way wrong the first time. I had to take it off and fix it, but I think he turned out super cute. So I do have the yarn to make another one. I'm going to make a pink one because I got some more of this chunky yarn that is pink. And this is how much I had left of the second ball. So what I'm going to do is, because I have a lot of purple left over, and then I'll have pink left over, and I got some other chunky um, scraps anyways. I think I'm going to save them all up and make some scrappy cats <laughs> eventually. Or other things, because Crystal said that she's going to use the same body and make other animals <laughs> I'm assuming animals or whatever and uh, I might make whatever those are whenever she comes out with those <laughs> but yeah so I'm just saving all these um, scraps this looks like it's really full but it's hollow on the inside because I, I use the uh, center pull but yeah so I wanted to show you it took I'd say probably one whole ball and like a third how many yards is in this it's got 109 yards so it didn't take a lot of chunky yarn uh, it would have taken more if I'd used chunky yarn for this, but I just used some worsted waste, um, like open skeins that I had. And uh, I think he's adorable. He's a little Siamese cat, or she. I think it's a boy. I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, that's my cat. And that is a paid for pattern. It's only like $2.50 on Crystal's Etsy shop, which I will link below for you guys to check out. All right, next finished object. <laughs> okay, my mittens. I made one mitten last week and showed it to you guys. Um, I think it was watch your working on Wednesday and I also showed it on the community tab. My legs are going to sleep. I got to reposition. <laughs> okay. I'm shorter. All right. Anyways, I had to adjust the camera a little bit because, um, there's all kinds of stuff in the background. <laughs> uh, my legs are going to sleep. So no. So I made the one mitten and I'm using just yarn from the Dollar Tree. Whoops. Premier just yarn in marmalade and maize. Marmalade's the orange and maize is the yellow. And I made this mitten and showed it to you guys. I was so excited to have this mitten done. And then I made the second one. Put it on. And got it done. So they're both done. But there's a difference between the two. <laughs> and it's kind of funny. Let me lay them out here. I don't know if you can see it well. Because they, they, they match together. But this one, the first one I made is larger than the second one I made. I don't think you guys can see it good. It's not like much larger, but it's just slightly larger. And I'll tell you why. <laughs> just a little bit bigger. Looser. I like this tighter one better, but I don't want to redo it. I'm just going to leave it. I wore them today outside, so it's fine. <laughs> I'm not worried about it. But the reason one came out larger is because this first one I made, I was using the Premier Just Yarn, and it's a size 4 for reference. <laughs> and I was using a G-hook, and it was a... The first one I was using was a Clover Amore G-Hook because I really love those Amores. I was gifted them, um, gosh, like a year and a half, two years ago. And I use them all the time. Like, those are my go-to hooks. <laughs> and um, but I was using that one for this one. And then I lost the hook when I got done with this one. I was, like, doing weaving in the ends, and I had lost it. And I thought it was in the couch. I was digging around the couch. And I ended up finding it a few days later underneath my, uh, my cart. So because I wanted to go ahead and finish up my other mitten, my second one, instead of using my Clover Amore G, I grabbed my... Susan Bates G with the ergonomic handle, the like soft handle ones that was also gifted to me <laughs> um, and made it this, the other one. So they're both G hooks. What I'm thinking is, you know, cause there's like three G hooks, I believe there's like a, um, what is G? It's like a four, a 4.25 and a 
five or something like that. I can't remember what they are. But uh, one of them was slightly different than the other one. So my Clover Amore hook, G, <laughs> uh, mitten is slightly larger than my Susan Bates hook. It also could be my tension because they're two different hooks with different handles. Maybe I was holding them differently. I don't know. <laughs> but it's just a slight difference. It's not like a hugely noticeable difference. Like if I lay them together, you can see that this, this thumb right here is overlapping that one. And if I lay them uh, like flat with each other, the bigger one just barely sticks out over here. And the cuff is just like a little bit longer. It's not like a giant difference, but it's just a noticeable difference when I'm wearing them. I do like the tighter one better. But um, again, I warmed today to the post office. It's snowing here. And they were nice and toasty and warm. And I, I really like this yarn <laughs> for just to be a dollar. So these are like $2 mittens i did have some leftover so this is the leftover of the marmalade and the maze the maze is smaller because i did make the cuffs out of the maze so i used more of the yellow yarn but i still got enough of this to make scrap pieces of other things so not too bad for two dollars worth of yarn <laughs> and i still have a full ball of each of these colors because i bought two of each so uh if i want to make like a matching head or ear warmer or something i could totally do that but yeah so my mittens are done Woo! <laughs> and I already wore them and they're nice and toasty. They feel good. And left over. So that needs to go in my scrap bucket. And then my two yarn bands. And that's the one band from the cat. Alright, two more finished objects. <laughs> one doesn't have a pattern because I just made it myself. Uh, it's supposed to be a marquee for the hashtag movie and stitch uh, collab that we're all doing. A lot of people are participating in it now. And I wanted to make a way to rank, rank the movies, even though most of them will probably be five stars because I love uh, I'm doing all family friendly movies and I love movies like that so I'm sure I'll love them all. <laughs> but uh, so I made like a marquee and I tried to make stars for it but every pattern I was doing was too big. And then so I, I winged my own star and when I made one I thought yeah this is totally gonna fit. <laughs> and then when I put them on there they didn't fit. So they're still large. But there's my marquee. <laughs> they're attached with stitch markers. And they're curly. I gotta figure out how to make them not curly. <laughs> and um, it's my little marquee for rating my movies. I wanted to do it across in like a straight line, but they're too large. But I'm not even worried about it. I could remake the marquee, I guess. Make it just a little bit bigger. But uh, it still works, so I'm happy with it. But again, there's no pattern use. I just used um, worsted weight yarn, scrap balls. Like this, I know this is white, and this is uh, something to do with daffodils. That's a red heart, yellow, something. I can't remember. But it's not bright yellow. It's like a duller bright yellow. And this is a paint box yarn that... Uh, was gifted to me in scrap ball form <laughs> by Carla and yeah so that's that's that just to write my movies and then my last finished object is my first square for the hashtag movie and stitch collab and uh, my movie for that if you don't watch that series was um, the absent-minded professor which is a 1961 movie and it's the original flubber movie and so this is the square made for that. <laughs> this is based off of the movie poster. So it's got a yellow background and it's got a lot of this really pretty blue color in the poster. And then I made a basketball because my favorite scene of the movie was the basketball scene. <laughs> and uh, the square I did use a pattern for. I will leave that in the description box below. Can't remember what it's called. It's like super simple something square. <laughs> and then the basketball, I just winged it. But all I did was make like a circular piece. I just increased like three times, I think. And then I top stitched these... Um, lines on there to look like the lines on basketballs and I just sewed it on there I did a pretty good job at sewing it on there I was doing it at first the way Jada teaches you to not show the back or threads through and then I just gave up and stitched it because I'm probably gonna after I put this blanket together I think I'm gonna line it with fleece or something to make it like a cozy movie blanket since it's gonna be a movie themed blanket and that'll be good to keep in the living room to watch movies under but so I'm not gonna worry about my ends <laughs> I mean my stitching on because I'm gonna hide it with fleece eventually <laughs> Yeah, so there's that. That's all my finished objects. It's quite a few. So yeah, I got two amigurumis, this thing that's kind of an amigurumi, a pair of mittens, a square, and a marquee. <laughs> so I'm pretty happy with that. I did good. Woo! Like I said, I don't have any active whips at all. I um I just haven't started anything. I do have all since today is February, I got all my ball bands that I used in February. Now what I'm doing about my ball bands. Like some of these yarns, I did use the entire skein of, like this one is on the cat. But the ones that I use enough of the skein that it becomes a scrap ball, I'm keeping their bands too. Because like this one, I used some of this yarn, but I didn't use enough to need 
to wind it into a ball. So this is just gonna go back on my wall of yarn so that I can use it. And I know that it's, you know, partially used. But, uh, so if I use this in February, then this will count as a February ball band and not a January one. So these are all the skeins of yarns that are either completely emptied or partially emptied enough to wind them into a ball to go on my scrap ball bin. So that's two right here, three, <laughs> and then there's ice yarn, four. What did I make? Oh, that's a hat. Another chunky, this was the first cat. <laughs> so five, and then I got one, two, three, four. Right, there's, this goes to the other cat. That's six, and then four hometowns that I made um, cows to donate with. So that's 10. <laughs> and then I've got, let's see here, those are jumbles. I've got three Red Heart regular size bands that were used for amigurumis and my heart blanket. So that's what, 13. And then two jumbo Red Heart bands. So 15 ball bands in January <laughs> used up. Like I said, all this wasn't used up yarn. Some of it is, um, like these Red Hearts made scrap balls, I'm sure. I'm trying to think about it. I don't think I finished off any Red Heart this month. I used a lot for that uh, scrap blanket. I made some amigurumis and stuff, so these are probably scrap balls. I did use up all of the um, hometown for the scarves, and I did use up one of these for the purple cat, and then the cream one for the Siamese cat. I used up all of this for the hat that I made. And these are all partial skeins that were used. So yeah, but that's 15 yarn balls. So that's 15 skeins that was taken off of my shelf. Some of them were partially put back as scraps, but we're not gonna worry about that. <laughs> Cause I'm gonna, I plan on making some more scrap projects throughout the year. So they'll get used up eventually. So I'm excited about that. So I'm gonna get a bag, probably this bag. I'll just put my scrap balls in there. I'm gonna take those out. This little bag I got for free at Walmart. <laughs> when doing grocery pickup, they sometimes give you like little gifts. Of samples so I'm gonna this is January so I'm gonna put this down in here now <laughs> and now today since it's February I'm gonna start saving my new ball bands I save them in this cup right here this was gifted to me by Becky at Funny Farm Crochet and it's got the little Mary on it ah, what is it saying here hashtag where's Irish Mar Mary oh I can't talk she takes this little doll Oh, it's glary. <laughs> like all, all over the place with her. But it's a mug that was in a gift package that she and some other people sent me. So when I use them, I just kind of roll them up and stick them in here. <laughs> and uh, at the end of the month, I will accumulate them. And then at the end of the year, I'll be able to see how many uh, skeins I took off of my shelf and used up mostly. I'm not going to worry about the scrap balls because I'll use them eventually. I use my scrap balls a lot for amigurumis. And also for like when I make like that heart blanket that's pieced together um for stuff like that so i'm not worried about scrapples but yeah so that was that a little mug i need to put back in my craft room then i did get some happy mail today my mom uh she took me to the post office when she came to get jesse oh that's just regular mail or mail <laughs> so i got a gift sent to me from beth oops dropping stuff in ohio she emailed me she had i think she said she had two copies of this magazine so she wanted to see if i had it and then if i didn't she was gonna send it to me so she did but it's this annie's woo, christmas catalog and it's the 2021 i've seen a lot of people getting this one and because i have the halloween one i love it oh i love it <laughs> so and i wanted this one i just didn't want to pay for it because it's 10.99 well, 9.99 in america uh, it's 10.99 canadian and that's just a lot of money for a magazine that I don't know what's all in it. Because I didn't see anyone do a flip through of this that I noticed. Maybe they did. And I wasn't paying attention. But it's got a ton of holiday themed um, decorations and stuff. So I'm super excited about that. You'll probably be seeing this a lot later this year when I'm into my Christmas crafting. She also sent two uh, little Hot Wheel cars for Jesse. But they're with him. <laughs> he opened them uh, in my mom's car and took them with him when they left. So the next thing I got has nothing to do with crochet. <laughs> but it's just mail that I got and I'll show it with you guys. It's actually a other hobby of mine, which is sewing. And I'm about to start getting into sewing clothes, apparently. My mom got gifted a pattern from a mini night friend of hers. They made her a dress and sent her the pattern so that she could uh, make her own dresses if she wanted, but she's not super into sewing. So she asked me if I could like learn it and make her some dresses, which I'm gonna try to do. I have it actually, oh, it's right here. It's made with Pennsylvania newspaper because the many not friends she has are in Pennsylvania. So here it is. I've been trying to take real good care of it because I don't want to 
mess it up. But it's got the, uh, is it this side? It's got the pattern drawn on it and like how much fabric you need and where to put the elastic. It's the entire dress pattern. <laughs> and uh, I think that's so cool. But I'm going to, I've already been like looking into it and stuff and uh, it's a very basic pattern. It's not like a fancy dress, you know, not a lot of pieces. Anyways, since I'm gonna be making her those, <laughs> she wants a bunch of those. Uh, I might make myself one, I don't know. It depends on how it fits, but I, got like a bug in me <laughs> to uh well like what else can i make clothes clothing wise i've always wanted to make clothes especially like costumes because we really love halloween and costumes are expensive <laughs> so it's probably cheaper to uh, accumulate materials over time and make your own costume but anyways i found this dress pattern while i was searching through my phone's dying searching through uh etsy and they sent it really cutely packaged up it was in this um like file folder but it had string wrapped around it and then it had this little card that's just a little like envelope thing with a coupon code for the next purchase and her business card in it and it's called lots lots of patterns and more .etsy.com <laughs> they have a ton of uh sewing patterns and they have a few crocheting patterns and stuff but i saw about this one is what i'm trying to say <laughs> it's like a 50s style dress I absolutely am obsessed with like, well, I'm just gonna say like the 60s and beyond. Pretty much any time the 60s and beyond, I'm obsessed with that. <laughs> I love anything from like Victorian era to pioneers to the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s. I just, I love that music. I love the clothes. I love the way people acted back then. I love, you know, just everything about that. <laughs> and so I bought this. This is a plus size because I am plus size. I keep trying to not be plus size, but you know, you only live once. <laughs> so you might as well be happy. But, um, so I think it's size, I think it says it's size 14 to, wait, it's US size 10 to 18. And the other dress, there's another dress in here that's a different size too. But, uh, it's got all the measurements on the back. You can't see it because it's glaring out really bad. But yeah, I'm super excited about this. I really like both of those dress patterns. <laughs> that one's really, really cute. This one has two different ways to do the back, I think. I was looking at the pattern. She had, like, pictures of the pattern on there. I don't know, but they're adorable. I, I don't know what the thing is under that makes it floofy. I mean, I know what they are. Like when I see them, I know that that's what that is, but I don't know what that's called. <laughs> the thing that makes your dress like floof out a little bit. I had one on my wedding dress when we when I got married. I think it had one and I didn't like the way it looked because the cut on my dress, I can't remember. It's been like a while, <laughs> but I love these dresses. My mom likes this one, so I might end up having to make her one of those. But uh, yeah, so the pattern's in there. It looks like it's brand new, never even been taken out of the envelope <laughs> so yeah i'm excited about learning how to make clothes like i want to make um t-shirts and stuff i'd love to be able to make jesse clothes because he grows out of clothes like that he's only four he's almost five but since last year when he was three he's been wearing five cl t clothes back then because he's so tall and long-armed it's not like he's fat or anything it's just he's too tall he has really tall jeans on both sides of his family and like now He's four, almost five, and he's in seven or six and seven and eight size clothes. <laughs> so I would love to be able to make his clothes or at least alter them because then I could purchase. We mostly thrift for our clothes. We rarely buy new clothes. But I could purchase larger clothes for him and then hem them up and then let them out as he grows. <laughs> that's my plan. But uh, luckily, my sister has a son that's older. My nephew is, he'll be 10 this year. So she hands down a lot of clothes to Jesse. He's in, that's why he's wearing it now mostly is his cousin's. Um, uh, shirts and stuff from when he was closer to his age. But anyways, I want to have so close. It's the moral of the story. <laughs> Especially the cute ones. Because I love, um, I've always wanted to dress like rockabilly. And I, I don't know how to do anything with my hair or my makeup or anything. But um, it'd be fun to learn that stuff and then just be able to dress cute like that. I don't know. But yeah, that's the moral of the story is I want to learn how to sew close. I'll link the shop down below too if you want to check it out. They got a lot of, um, really nice patterns some of them are really old and I know um it's, it's kind of touch and go with older patterns because you know back then things were geared towards more thin <laughs> women and so it's kind of hard but you know as long as you know how to alter things to your sizes you can um you can alter any pattern to fit you that's what I'm saying <laughs> but also like I was looking when we when we thrift I look at the clothes that are larger than me like um 
like I'll, I'll look at the larger size dresses and shirts and stuff because if I found one I really like I could always alter it to fit me so I just I want to get into where I can do that more often because then it'd be cool to be able to have cute clothes that I didn't have to go to tour it and spend $80 on one shirt because the plus size industry for food is or food <laughs> for clothing is crazy they up they up the prices crazy like I know there's more material involved but there's not $50 more material because <laughs> you go to a store and there's like a size small shirt that's 10 bucks and the same exact shirt in a size extra large is $39.99 and it's like okay there's not that much more material in there <laughs> it's the exact same pattern so the sewing's the same but uh it's just stupid it's like the pink tax for women's stuff against men's stuff the exact same razor is like four dollars more because it's pink and it's just it's just stupid <laughs> but anyways i'm gonna hop off here that's all the mail i got other than bills and tax papers <laughs> but uh yeah i guess that's everything i'm blabbing now but yeah i'm gonna be putting him in the shop and probably this little croissant i don't know if anyone's gonna want this croissant though because he's not like baked he doesn't look like a crispy croissant <laughs> Uh, some people said he looks like a sheep or something, but I don't think he's cute <laughs> But uh, if no one wants him, I'll just keep him and stick him somewhere. I have a shelf up here uh, How messy is my house? I don't want to show you if it's messy Oh, Up there, can you see it? And it's got amigurumis that people have gifted me on it There's a Christmas one, a Halloween one, and a Valentine's Day uh, amigurumi up there and they stay up there all the time because I don't care if they're not with the theme of my house because I don't have a theme <laughs> Um but I like looking at them because people made them for me and they're beautiful. They're absolutely beautiful. I love them. <laughs> My plan is to fill it up. If as people give to me more amigurumis, I'm just going to stuff that shelf full. I have another shelf here that I do put like holiday decorations on for different holidays. Right now there's just a bird and a flower. <laughs> but if, if that one gets full, I'll just overflow it over there. Because <laughs> I love keeping the gifts that people send me where I can see them and enjoy them. And uh, yeah, but anyways, I'm going to hop off here and I'll see you guys in the next video. I'm loving. <laughs> Bye guys.